Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, I want to talk about what's going on in Israel right now, and there is a lot going on, and this is something we need to be watching in the coming days and weeks. And I'm always going to talk about what's going on with Israel, because if you want to know what time it is on God's prophetic timeline, you watch his timepiece, the nation of Israel. Israel as the hour hand, Jerusalem as the minute hand, the Temple Mount as the second hand. And when you look at what's going on right now with Israel, with Jerusalem, and with the Temple Mount, you will see we are on the verge of a dispensational change. Right now, we're in the dispensation of grace, the church age. But God is about to put its full attention back to the nation of Israel for Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period. So let's jump right into it. This is recently in from the Jerusalem Post. In case you haven't been following what's going on right now uh, over in Israel, the last couple days there has been over 1,100 rockets fired from Gaza, specifically from uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, since the start of Operation Shield and Arrow. Currently, as I'm recording this video, there has not been a ceasefire. I know that there was ceasefires and the talks and whatnot, but the rockets keep flying. So as I'm doing this video, there has not been a ceasefire. We will see what happens in the coming days. Um, however, this is getting ugly and it's getting ugly fast. I wanted to talk about, this is Justin from the Jerusalem Post. We know that Palestinian Islamic Jihad has fired over 1,100 rockets from Gaza towards Israel just in the past few days. And uh, this is in from the Jerusalem Post just recently. Palestinian Islamic Jihad has 6,000 rockets, Israeli security official says. Why this is very important. So if Palestinian Islamic Jihad has fired over 1,100 missiles already from Gaza towards Israel, and we know that it has around 6,000 uh, missiles in its arsenal, that means it's going to run out eventually. And you notice that Israel keeps taking out uh, Islamic Jihad leaders. And Islamic Jihad's in a position now, they're going to keep firing these rockets. They're going to keep firing the rockets, but eventually they're going to run out. And that's why they are starting to ask for Hezbollah, Hamas, and other surrounding enemies of Israel to join the fight because they're running out. They're going to run out. And they need someone else to join them in their cause in attacking Israel. This is Justin from the Times of Israel. Islamic Jihad, if Israeli escalation continues, we won't stop before the flag march, which the flag march is coming uh, in a few days here on May 18th. So although they've fired over 1,100 rockets already, and we know they have 6,000 or so in their arsenal, they're going to keep going. But what we need to pay attention to, this is Justin from the Middle East Monitor. Hamas, Palestinian resistance unified in repelling Israeli aggression. You keep seeing these words of unify, confederacy, um, resistance. So you're seeing Hezbollah, which currently has over 150,000 missiles pointed at Israel. Hamas, which has a lot more missiles than Palestinian Islamic Jihad. All right? You have Palestinian Islamic Jihad uh, that has currently 6,000 uh, missiles in its arsenal, and they already fired over 1,100 at Israel in the past few days. And you have the other surrounding enemies of Israel. When you look at this resistance, if you see them all joined together, they have over 250,000 missiles currently pointed at Israel. And this is Justin from the Times of Israel. Hezbollah leader, Nasrallah, we will not hesitate to assist Gaza if required. And then this just in from the Times of Israel, Islamic Jihad official, the campaign continues, our next attacks are on the way. 
And then this just in from the cradle, Israel presses ahead with flag march despite Gaza operation. So I wanna connect the dots with you again on the recent events, what's going on currently, what's coming in the days and weeks ahead, Lord willing, uh, as we approach Flag Day on May 18th, which the uh, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, Hamas, have said you better not do this march of the flags. Uh, we'll keep firing rockets until then, then if you're still plan on doing this march, it's gonna get even crazier. But I wanna connect these dots with you, and then I wanna go to why this is significant in regards to end times Bible prophecy. So, there's been over 1,100 rockets fired from Gaza towards Israel from Palestinian Islamic Jihad just in the past couple days. As I'm doing this video, a ceasefire has not been reached yet because every time they talk about it, the rockets just keep flying. We'll see if there is a ceasefire reached uh, in the coming days. My guess is if there is one, it's just going to allow Islamic Jihad to get together with Hezbollah, Hamas, and the other uh, proxies to reload and then hit Israel again. That's probably what, if there is a ceasefire you're going to hear about in the coming days, that's probably what's going to happen. They're not done. They're just going to reload and reconfigure with this confederacy they've made to attack Israel again. Um, however, Islamic Jihad fires over 1,100 uh, missiles from Gaza towards Israel the past couple days. They have over 6,000 missiles in their arsenal, so we know eventually they're going to run out. And that's why you're seeing Hamas, Hezbollah, um, the Houthis in Yemen, Fatah, other proxies saying, okay, we will, you know, if we need to, we're going to join this resistance. Well, eventually, uh, Islamic Jihad is going to run, their leaders keep getting, getting killed. Even though they keep firing these rockets, eventually they're going to run out. So they're going to have to lean on Hezbollah, Hamas, these other proxies to join in the fight. Now, why is all this significant in regards to end times Bible prophecy? Well, I'll tell you why. In the book of Psalms, chapter 83, this is a psalm, psalms uh, from the prophet Asaph. So Psalms, chapter 83, we're going to read verse 1 to 5. But first, if you think Psalms 83 has already been fulfilled, um, you're allowed your opinion. I believe, based off what I see take place right now, that this is the next war that is coming. I do believe Ezekiel 38 is lining up as well. Uh, that is a future war. But I believe what we're seeing line up right now, folks, especially if you look at the, uh, the confederacy that's lining up, we're going to talk about it in a second. It looks like what's about to occur is Psalms 83. So let's read Psalms 83, a Psalms of Asaph. We're going to read verse 1 to 5. Keep not those silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with one consent, and they are confederate against thee. So very clearly in Psalms chapter 83, verses 1 to 5, we are told that there will be a confederacy that joins together with the same goal and the same mission. And their mission is to join together, to wipe, to join together, to attack Israel, to, to wipe them off the face of the map, map, excuse me, so that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And then we just read Psalms chapter 83, verse 1 to 5. And then when you read verses 6 to 8, it actually... Uh, will name this confederacy, the Psalms 83 Confederates. On the left there, you can see the ancient name, the tents of Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, Hagarines, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Tyre, Assyria. And on the right side, you will see uh, the equivalent today, the Palestinians, Southern Jordanians, uh, Saudis, uh, Egyptians, Hezbollah, Northern Lebanese, Arabs of the Sinai area, Hamas of the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah, which we already covered, uh, Assyrians. It tells you the exact confederacy that's going to form to join together with the same goal and the same mission to wipe Israel off the map so the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. The amazing thing is when you read the entire chapter, which I encourage you to do, Psalms 83, you will see that this confederacy that joins together 
with the one goal, the one mission, to wipe Israel off the map so the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, they're going to lose. God is going to kick some butt. When this confederacy attempts to come together to wipe Israel off the map, these surrounding enemies, God is going to defend Israel. They are going to be defeated. But what we're seeing right now and why we need to pay attention is you're seeing the words of resistance, confederacy, um, all these different names of aligning together between Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. You're seeing Fatah, uh, the Houthis in Yemen, and other proxies and surrounding enemies of Israel. The ones listed in Psalms 83 exactly are joining together and we're seeing them say, okay, well, if you need help, if you need help, um, we're going to join together because we have the same mission to attack and wipe Israel off the map. And that's why we need to pay attention in the coming days and weeks. Because if we know Palestinian Islamic Jihad, their leaders are being killed. They've used over 1,100 rockets already that they fired uh, toward Israel from Gaza. And they have 6,000 in their arsenal. And they're saying, you know, they're going to keep firing these rockets, especially if we go to Flag Day on May 18th. And Israel proceeds with the, flag, the march of the flags. Hezbollah is saying that they, they have no problem joining in. Hamas is saying that they'll join the resistance. You're seeing all the players coming into play for this prophecy. Literally, there could be a ceasefire in the coming days, folks. But if there is one, don't think they're just going to stop. No, they're going to join together to get this resistance fully on board to re-gear and then re-attack at a later date. But maybe there won't be a ceasefire. Did you think of that? Maybe this is the time Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, the Houthis in Yemen, Fatah, and others all join together to attempt this all-out assault on Israel, which is going to end very bad because they're going to lose. God's going to get the victory, but this is a perfect setup, folks. Because imagine, this war takes place, Psalms 83. This is a perfect setup for the future Antichrist to come forth. After the rapture of the church, he's going to make order out of chaos. He's going to confirm the covenant with many. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Between Israel and its surrounding enemies. So he can rise up after the rapture. And when this war does occur, he's going to make order out of chaos. He's going to bring forth this covenant with death, as Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15 calls it. That's going to make it acceptable between Israel and its surrounding enemies, the many. For, a, for one week, seven years, when the Antichrist confirms a covenant between Israel and its surrounding enemies for a seven years, and part of this will, I believe, believe, allowing them to rebuild the third temple, that is when the seven-year tribulation period starts. So let's watch together. That's what we do. We watch. We're seeing what's unfolding and we're looking at what the Bible says, folks. And when you do that and you connect the dots, it's all there. So yes, maybe a ceasefire comes in the coming days leading up to the March of the Flags. But the way it's looking right now, folks, they said they're not going to stop. And you're seeing Hezbollah, Hamas, others coming forth and saying they're going to join the resistance. So whether there's a ceasefire or not, this is eventually going to happen. The most important thing above all else if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world at everything occurring right now and look at what your Bible says. You will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back and he is coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. So what do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin that, that you could never pay on your own Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, 
and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it, Jesus is coming. And he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.